Math 152. We're going to take a, sec a look at Section 3.4, uh, just the first part. And our long-term goal is to be able to do integrals uh, of this type. And um, we're actually not going to do any calculus today. What we're going to do is talk about ways to break this up so we can turn it into something that we can do some integration by parts for. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to say that this can be rewritten, this, this fraction can be rewritten as uh, 1 plus x plus 1 plus, I'm sorry, 1 over x plus 1 plus 2 over x minus 2. And then if we know how to do that, then we could break this up into integral uh, integration by parts. Um, and then we can be like, oh, a natural log, right? Natural log of whatever that base is. So the question is, how do we get from here to here? And today, we're not going to worry about this part. So we're just going to, it's going to be kind of an algebra day today. And then next, next uh, lecture will be the next step to do those integrals. So let's do it. Uh, 3x over x squared minus x minus 2. And this method that we're using, this, this rewriting, is called partial fractions. They're nice and uh, clean for you. So one thing I want you to notice is uh, we're going to have to pay attention to the degree of the denominator and of the numerator. So notice the degree here is 2, the degree here is 1. So as long as we are lower degree over higher degree, we're good to do the method that I'm going to show you now. And uh, if not, we'll have some techniques in order to get there. But let's focus on this. So first thing I want to do um, is factor this denominator. So this is the same as 3x over things that multiply to negative 2, add to negative 1, uh, x minus 2 times x plus 1. And if this ends up not, not factorable in the denominator, we have some methods we'll talk about later for that too. But for now, we're going to start here. So now what we want to do is rewrite this. And notice the pieces here. I had this x plus 1 and this x minus 2. Those are the factors of that denominator. So I want to figure out what the numbers are that go on top here. So I'm going to write this equivalent to a over one of the factors uh, plus b over the other factor. And it doesn't really matter what order you write them in because they're added together. So now we want to solve this for a and b. And here is the rub. I have this fraction equal to this fraction. So how about I multiply both sides by this denominator? In other words, I'm going to multiply it by uh, x minus 2 times x plus 1. And it gets distributed over here. Again, if I multiply both sides of this equation by it, it gets distributed across that addition, and, and this happens. And then what's great is I, those divide out, x minus 2, x plus 1. Here the x plus 1s divide out. Here the x plus, minus 2s divide out. So notice what I'm left with is over, over here on the left, uh, a 3x. And over here on the right, uh, a times x minus 2 plus b times x plus 1. Again, my strategy is factor that denominator, write this as some partial fractions, right? Some a something over one of the factors plus b over the other factor. If there's more factors, c, d, e, f. Multiply both sides by that denominator, so it wipes it out on this side, and then I get this equation. Now, I'm going to show you two different methods uh, to use. One of them is really efficient, but it doesn't always, you, do, you can't always use it. But just to give it a name, let, let's call this, this uh, strategic substitution. And it sounds clever because it is clever. Uh, I noticed that I have this, this x minus 2 in here. Notice if I let x equals 2, what I'm doing is I'm making some zeros. So I plug 2 in for x. On this side, I get 3 times x. So that's a, that's a 6. And then notice over on this side, if I plug the 2 in here, this is a 0, a times 0. That's gone. And so then I have that's equal to b uh, times 2. The, the strategy, the reason this is strategic is because it cancels out one of these, or maybe multiple of them, and it lets it, so I can just solve for b then. So I got 3b equals 6, so b equals 2. Great, so there's my first piece. And my next strategic substitution would be the same idea. Make it so that this part cancels out. So let's make x equal to negative. 
And remember, you're, you're substituting it into all the x's. So this is a 0, so that's gone. Over here, we have 3 times negative 1. So I've got negative 3 is equal to plug in the negative 1 here. Just write it out. You might put it in your head. So I've got negative 3. Uh, negative 1 minus 2 is negative 3. So a must be 1. From that substitution, then, go back up to my original setup. It's a over x plus 1. So 1 over x plus 1 plus b is 2, uh, 2 over x minus 2, which is what I said it was going to be. So notice that means I can take this equation, I'm sorry, this statement, this fraction, and rewrite it as these two fractions added. Right, so that strategic substitution, it doesn't always work, but uh, I'm going to use it as often as, as I can. Now, it might not work, and I don't know, you might prefer this method. I'm just going to power this out. Um, and this method, we're going to call it uh, equate the coefficients. So let's go ahead and multiply this out. I've got 3x equal to, distribute that a into there, ax minus 2a, plus distribute that b into there, uh, bx plus b. And then now what I'm going to do is kind of rearrange stuff. Notice I have ax and a bx. So I'm going to think of this as ax plus bx minus 2a plus b, and that's equal to 3x. So if I start to group things, notice these this ax plus bx, I've got a plus bx minus, uh, let's say, plus negative 2a plus b, right? So notice what I have is some of my x's, a plus b has to be my x's, and negative 2a plus b has to be my 1's. So over here, this three, this, I could think of this 3x as 3x plus 0. So do you see how a plus b is how many x's I have? So um, a plus b must equal 3. See what I'm doing? I'm equating the coefficients. The coefficient for x is 3, so I would have to have a plus b equal 3. And my coefficient, or my, my 1's, is a 0, and that has to equal negative 2a plus b. And I get this system to solve. So again, I'm grouping the x's, grouping the ones. How many ones do I have? Zero, so that must equal zero. How many x's do I have? Three, so that equals that must equal three. I could end up with an x squared term in this as well, and I'd say how many x squareds do I have? And then to solve this system, I'm gonna just subtract uh, a minus negative two a is three a, b minus b is zero, right? I, I subtract it and make b fall out. Three minus zero is three, so that means that a must be one. Plug it back into here, 1 plus b equals 3, b equals 2. And you've got the same answers as over here. That is the bulk of it. That's what we're going to do. Um, there's some other pieces for us to consider. For example, when it is not lower over higher, uh, what if these aren't factorable? What if these are repeated? So we'll dig into all those. But before we do that, I'm going to do another example. So notice I've got three factors, x, x minus 2, and x plus 1. So I'm going to want to write this as three fractions added together. And I need to know what those coefficients are. So I'm going to say a over x, b over x minus 2, plus c over x. And I want to take this fraction, rewrite it as that fraction, where they're equivalent to each other. So same strategy as before. I'm going to multiply both sides by this denominator. And um, you can write it out if you want. What I notice is when I, when I take this whole thing and multiply this side by it, it's just going to be gone. So this is going to be 3x plus 2. Then over here, the x's would cancel when I multiply this thing uh, by that. So that I'm going to be left with a times uh, x minus 2 times x plus 1. Plus, when I multiply this one by it, the x minus 2 will cancel. So that would be b times x times x plus 1. And then similarly, when I multiply this one by it, boom, the x plus 1s cancel. So here's what's left, c times x times x plus 2. All right, and you've got this seemingly huge, uh, almost intimidating thing. But what's nice is if we think about those two methods that we talked about, we can do strategic substitution, or we can do equate coefficients. Let's, let's see if, if strategic substitution gives us anything here. 
And what's kind of nice is it sure does because what's great is like here, this one doesn't have an X in it because it canceled out, but both of these two. So let's let X be zero. Notice my strategy here. If I let X be zero, B times zero, doesn't matter, this whole thing's gonna be zero. C times zero, this whole thing's gonna be zero. So when X is zero, if I plug it in on the left-hand side, three times zero plus two, that's a two. If I plug it in over here on the right-hand side, you might see it, I'm just gonna write out the steps, zero minus two, zero plus one. So notice I have uh, negative two times one. So I've got negative two A equals two. So A must equal negative one. And I've got my uh, got my first piece there. So let's keep going from here. Let's keep being strategic. Let's uh, notice this one um, has an x minus two. This one has an x minus two. So if I want to know b, I'm going to let x equal two because that'll zero this out and zero that out. So when x equals two, if I plug it in over here, three times two plus two. Yeah, when you're doing this, you might just be right away. Oh, that's eight. Plug the two in here, zeros out. Plug it in here, it zeros out. So I'm left with B times two. So three times two is six, six B. Divide both sides by six. That means that uh, B is eight sixth, which is four thirds. And you're probably predicting my next substitution will be negative one strategically uh, making this a zero, making that a zero. So x is negative one. I've got three times negative one plus two. I find that writing things down helps me make a few, uh, fewer arithmetic mistakes. So negative three plus two is negative one. Uh, negative one times negative three is positive three. So C must equal negative one third. All right, so I've got all my pieces. A is negative one, B is uh, four thirds, C is negative one third. Now, when you write this, there's a couple of ways you can write it. I really want you to start thinking about, we really basically have whatever this is times whatever this fraction is. So this first thing we could write is negative one over X. Uh, this next one, B is four thirds. We can write it like this, four thirds over, x minus two, right? Minus one third over x plus one. Just plug in the c in, plug in the b in. We can write it this way. This is not a bad way to think about it. Uh, it's gonna help us, because remember, like long-term goal here is to be able to do this. Take the integrals of these, and that is just a constant that we're gonna end up pulling out. Um, but this, just, just for form, this is the same as uh, writing it this way, right? Just think of it as four thirds times one over x minus two, which is also the same as writing it this way. Just knowing that all of those are equivalent is important. I'm gonna, I'm gonna like thinking about it this way, just because, again, I'm gonna end up wanting to take the integral of this, and that four thirds is a constant that I can. That I can. All right, so there is that basic method. Before we go further, I wanna say, don't forget what you know. You learn a new technique and it's easy to go, oh, everything applies to that. But let's say this was my fraction and I wanted to um, write it with these partial fractions. So you could start to set it up, this is x times x, but really, since you just have one thing here, this is the same as this. And the x is cancel here. So you got five over x minus three over x squared. Nothing fancy you have to do on that one. So looking at this one, it's not a lower degree over a higher degree, right? This is x squared over x squared. These are equivalent degrees. So I've got to do a little bit of this division first before I can do the rest of my work. So I'm gonna to have to do some long division in order to do this. And long division is something you would have seen in pre-calc. Um, I don't know if you've seen it since then. You could look up some ways on how to do it. But basically, um, here is my long division. So how many times does x squared go into x squared once? And then I'm going to multiply this whole thing by this one. So x squared 
plus 0x minus 4. Then I'm going to subtract that. So x squared minus x squared is 0. 3x minus 0x is 3x. 1 minus negative 4 is plus 5. And if x squared went into this, I would do it again and just keep going. But um, notice I have this divided by that is 1 plus this remainder. And this remainder is still divided by that. So this would be 3x plus 5 over x squared minus 4. And so then now I do have 1. So that's part of what this equals, 1 plus this. Now I have a lower degree over a higher degree. I can go and still do the same, um, same method I was doing before. So let's do that. I'm going to remember there's a 1 plus here. Oh, I'm going to write my answer up here. 1 plus. And then let me do this part. So this x squared minus 4 factors to x plus 2 uh, times x minus 2. So think about multiplying everything by this denominator. You got a 3x plus 5. Over here, the x plus 2s would cancel. So I'd leave you a x minus 2. Here, the x plus 2s would cancel. And let's be strategic. Uh, if x equals 2, this thing goes to 0. This becomes 6 plus 5. So 11 equals, plug it in here, 4b. So it'd be, b would be 11 fourths. And then um, let's let x be negative 2. This goes to 0. Negative 2 plus 3 is negative 6 plus 5 is 1. Plug a negative 2 into here. I've got a negative 4a. So a would be negative 1 fourth. So looking at my pieces here, I've got the 1 plus, and this broke up into a times uh, x plus 2. So a is negative 1 fourth. So I will say minus 1 fourth times uh, 1 over x plus 2. b is 11 fourths. So I'm going to say plus 11 fourths or 1. Uh, x minus 2. And again, um, to clarify, there's multiple ways you could write this. You could put the 1 fourth up on top, or you could put this as 1 over 4 times that. All the, all the same thing. Okay, so if they're the same, we, if they're the same or this is higher than that, we've got to do some synthetic division to have to pass that out. And uh, if you're not familiar with synthetic division, um, I'm going to suggest you know, you could check it out on Khan Academy or maybe if you kept your stuff from pre-calc, review that. Now, there's two more cases for us to think about. Now, there could be times where we have uh, what we call a repeated linear root. So notice we'd have, this is basically x, uh, 2x minus 1 twice, right, squared. So we have to take into account that we have this thing twice. So we're going to write this as three parts. Think of this as three different as it has three um, factors in it, but we're going to say um, a over 2x minus 1, so over the singular case of it, and then we're going to say b over the squared case of it, 2x minus 1 squared, and then over the third one, c over x minus 1. Okay, so there that is, and again, this is a repeated linear roots, or I should say factors. And again, uh, we just account that there's two of them, right? This one and this one. And I know it feels like it's in there twice. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to multiply both sides by this. So on this left-hand side, it cancels out entirely. Now, when I multiply this one by it, I'm going to write it up here for us. On this one, notice this 2x plus 1 cancels out one of those. So this leaves me um, a times 2x minus 1 times x minus 1 plus this whole thing cancels out squared squared b times x minus 1 plus and then the x minus 1 cancels out. Boom. And as we take a look at this, I think we can still be strategic here. Right, like if x is equal to 1, this is a 0 and this is a 0. 
So let's let x equal 1. Uh, 1 minus 2 is negative 1. If I plug a 1 to here, this is a 0. 0 times anything is 0. Plug a 1 into here, this is a 0. So I'm left with uh, c times, um, if I plug a 1 into here, 2 minus 1 is 1, 1 squared. Oh, so c is equal to negative 1. Great. There's my first step. Uh, let's see. How about, we can figure out what b is as well. Let's let uh, x equal, what makes this a 0? 1 half. If x equals 1 half. So if we plug it into this side, we've got 1 half minus 2. If we plug it into here, this makes a 0. That's gone. This makes a 0. That's gone. So we have b times 1 half minus 1. So let's see. 2 minus a half. Negative 3 halves. Um, 1 half minus 1 is negative 1 half. Multiply both sides by negative 2, and it looks like b is equal to negative 3. No, positive 3. All right, but now this is where our strategy fails us because no matter what we plug in, this a is going to get canceled out. So we can't just get at the a. Um, so now we're going to have to multiply these out. But what's nice is we actually know some values. We know that c is negative 1, and we know that b is 3. So let's plug these in. So we've got uh, x minus 2 equals a times whatever this is. Plus, but we know that b is 3, so let's put it in there. 3 times x minus 1. We know that c is negative 1, so let's put that in there as well. Okay, now we've got some multiplying to do. Uh, if I multiply this out, that's going to be 2x squared minus x minus 2x minus 3x plus 1. I know I can just distribute that into there. This thing squared, I remember squaring mean times itself, so this would be 4x squared minus 4x plus 1. So x minus 2 is equal to, distribute that a into there. So 2a x squared minus 3a plus a, plus, distribute this 3 into here, 3x minus 3. And then this negative 1 gets distributed into here, so minus 4x squared plus 4x minus 1. Um, what are we looking for? We're looking for the a value. Like, we already know the b value. We already know the c value. Got this. How about, I'll take advantage I have 0x squareds. And you can just do it relative to x, too. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it to x squared. I've got 0x squared. So notice I've got, this is an x squared term, and this is an x squared term. So I know that 2ax squared minus 4x squared equals 0x squared. Remember this is this this is called, um, what was it called? Matching the, uh, whoops, coefficients. Equate the coefficients. So if the coefficient for x squared is 0, these are my x squared pieces. So 2a minus 4 must equal 0, because this has to cancel out to 0. So add 4. Divide by 2, and a equals, uh, a equals 2. Cool. Now I've got all my pieces. And that means I can rewrite this as, let's see, a was 2. So 2 over 2x minus 1 plus b is 3. 3 over 2x minus 1 squared plus uh, c. Oh, c was negative 1. So minus 1 over x minus 1. There it is. Again, just future looking, then we're going to end up taking the integral of this, uh, of all these pieces. And so we'll, again, talk about that next piece, next lecture. All right, there's one other case that I want to talk about, and that's when um, those, those factors are irreducible. In other words, I can't factor the denominator. Here's a case. I'm going to rewrite this partial fractions i can factor this denominator uh take out an x i've got x squared plus one okay so notice this is different like our last example was 2x minus one squared this is like 2x minus one times 2x minus one 
right? The x in the factors isn't really squared. In this case, I can't factor that any further. So this is a different case. This isn't a linear thing squared. This is an irreducible quadratic. We can't factor that anymore. So as we've been setting these up, notice that it's always like this is linear and then this is like a, right? This is just a constant, just a number. This is linear, this is, a, this is linear, this is a number. The factor is linear. So when we set this up, we're going to have to set it up a little bit different. We can still do a over x. But then the thing that's going to go over this irreducible part is something that's linear. So this is an x squared. We've got it shifted down one, like, like think of taking the derivative of it to, in terms of x. So this is actually going to be a bx plus c. Right? x, um, the thing that's over x is x to the zero. The thing that's over x squared is x to the first. It shifts down a little. Okay, but same, from here now, it's just the same strategy. So we've got that equal to that. So let's multiply both sides by this, x times 2x minus 1. Over here, it divides out. Over here, the x divides out, right? We're multiplying by it. So I have a times x squared plus 1. Plus, over here, the 2x plus 1 divides out, leaves me an x. So I've got x times uh, bx plus c. So if I can do some clever uh, strategic substitution, I'm going to. And I notice if I let x equal 0, that this will 0 out right here. So let's plug that in there. So if I plug in 0 for x, uh, this is a negative 3. Uh, 0 squared is 0. So a, oh, so a equals negative 3, right? Because that's 0. So a is equal to negative 3. And now I've got to figure out what, uh, what b and c are. And I, I, you know, I'm not going to plug an i into there. So let me rewrite what I know so far. So 2x minus 3 equals negative 3 times x squared. Throw some stuff together, distribute that negative 3 into there. I'll just gather up some pieces. I'll throw the the x squareds together, negative 3x squared plus bx squared. And then I've got this cx, and then I've got this negative 3. And notice I've got 0x squareds plus 2x minus 3. So two things I know here, uh, since I've got 0x squareds, negative 3 plus b must equal 0. And I've only got one c term so c must be two and according to this b then must be three so i've got my pieces now which means i can go back and say a is negative three so negative three over x plus let's see b is three and c is two so three x plus two over x squared yeah do one more example Okay, I have got a repeated factor that is nonlinear and irreducible. So basically, I've got this x squared plus 1 times x squared plus 1. So I know it's going to be one of them, and then it's squared. That's what I've got to do when I have a repeated factor. And then now, since these are x squareds in them, these are nonreducible, I'm going to think of this as ax plus b. I think of this one as cx plus d, right? It's got to be linear since this is quadratic. And again, I'm not worried about that part when I say this is quadratic. Ooh -wee. Okay, well, we got this. Uh, let's multiply both sides by this. And so here I've got an x cubed. Here I've got one of these in the denominator, so it cancels out the squaring part. So I'm left with ax plus b times x squared plus 1. Plus, the whole thing divides out here, cx plus d. And I don't have, oh boy, I don't see any clever way to do any sort of uh, substitution. So let's just multiply this out and we'll match up coefficients. So ax times x squared is ax cubed. Uh, b times x squared is bx squared. Um, ax times 1 is ax. b times 1 is b. 
notice that's plus cx plus d. Okay, so let me throw some pieces together here. Notice over here, I've got zero x squared, zero x's, and zero ones, which is kind of nice. Um, I've only got one x cubed term, so it looks like a has to be one. So I've got only one x squared term, so it looks like b has to be zero. And what else do I know? I know that ax plus cx, so that would be a plus c x's. I've got zero of those, but a is one. So if I plug that in, c is negative one. And then I've got b plus d, those are ones, equals zero. Uh, b zero, so d must be zero. So there's all my pieces. a is one, b zero, c is negative one, d zero. Oh, great. I'm going to plug them back into this. Just clean this up a little bit. So, so a is one, b is zero. So this would be one over uh, x plus, oh no, let's make it minus, since c is negative, minus one over, beautiful. All right, there is all of that. Um, it could end up that in this case like this, this cx plus d over something, um, you, let, let's say you ended up with like um, c is negative one over 48, and then uh, d is like negative one sixth. And that's over some polynomial, right? Let's just say it's x squared. Um, you could leave it like that. If you wanted, you could factor a negative 148 out of there. So you could write this like negative 148, and you've still got this, and you've got x. And notice that if I take a negative 148 out of that, that's going to make that a positive 8. Right? You can think about dividing this by negative uh, 148th, or you can think about like this time, 148th times what would have to give me negative 1 sixth, and, and the answer is 8. So you might see answers written like this when you wrote them like that. Okay, hey, give these problems a try. Um, this is really good practice. Have this down so that next time when we actually start to go, okay, great, now we're going to do integrals of these that out that arithmetic that algebra doesn't get in the way post questions uh, message me and uh, do all your practice